Salute, salute, salute. What it is, what it do, what's happening, man. It's Nocturnal Thoughts, man. I'm chilling. Can't always be working. You can't always be in the gym grinding. Sometimes you just got to sit home, lay down, watch some TV, and relax. You know what I'm saying? Got my little, uh, my shoulder uh, heat pad on, laying down, watching a movie. But I'm going to get up and get to my grind a little bit later on today. You know what I'm saying? Because the grind don't stop. But I'm going to make this video real quick. We're talking about Keith Thurman versus Tim Zhu. Uh, Jamel Charlo versus Terrence Bud Crawford. Uh, Jerron Booth Sinners versus Terrence Bud Crawford. Real quick video. But my main thing is this. Because I'm thinking I watched some Tim Zhu fights last night. I watched him fight Tony Harrison. And I watched his last fight against Brian Mendoza. Because I wanted to see how slow Tim Zhu was. Because, uh, you know, Keith Thurman was saying he had the fat, flat Mexican feet and, you know, that he was just going to outbox him. So I wanted to see, again, if Tim Zhu could just walk you down behind his jab and break you down to the body. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and Tony Harrison fight didn't really give me a good idea that the Brian Mendoza fight gave me a little bit more of a, you know, gauge of how fast or how slow Tim Zhu is, you know, um, to me, he kind of remind me more of a, not the Mexican style, but like that boxing kangaroo style, no disrespect, no pun intended. That's just what I see. Like I remember growing up watching that little, uh, Looney Tunes cartoon. They always had that boxing kangaroo. They thought it was a big mouse and he'd come out that crate and he had a boxing gloves on and was knocking everybody out. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I'm looking at, I watched, uh, I watched, uh, Boots versus Kakazan, uh, Karen, Kareem, Kakazan, whatever that dude name was. I watched that fight, uh, the other day because I wanted to see how, why, why did, why did, uh, Boots, you know, struggle so much with a guy that was moving off the, the, uh, the line that was moving and, you know, engaging on a different beat, different rhythm, different pattern when he decided to, to you know what I'm saying, approach the line and his tactic of what made Boots struggle so much. Because to me, that was just not a good performance from Boots. It wasn't like, you know, he, he was just getting, uh, he didn't, to me, to me, they was like, oh, he's dominating every round. And, to, and in my opinion, he wasn't dominating every round. He was, he had some fits, he had some struggles and he was getting walked into some shots. He won the fight convincingly, but he still didn't really cut that ring off and, and make dude fight the way he wanted him to fight. Um, but back to Keith Thurman, man. Keith Thurman, you know, I just can't put any faith in Keith Thurman right now. You know, he was talking big, big, big talk when he was about to fight Manny Pacquiao, an older Manny Pacquiao, a fight that was like a dream fight for him. And he was talking big stuff big spit and he lost that fight and not only did he lose that fight it was the fact that before that fight adrian broner ab of all people said that he had to check the mentality of keith thurman the night before the fight because he was up late in the morning gambling instead of being focused and locked in on the task at hand and he went in there and had a poor performance so he did all that big talking talking about Manny Pacquiao, T-Rex arms, and he was going to crucify Manny Pacquiao. And he went in there with his mind not even right because he wasn't even focused before the fight. He was out gambling. He talked all that big talk to fight Mario Barrios, saying so, sort of the some, same things he's saying against Tim Zhu, like basically admitting that he's a gatekeeper and that Tim, Tim Zhu is trying to open the gate to start the new era of the young fighter of the Tim Zhu era and he's going to slam the gate in his face. So you admitting that you a gatekeeper, which is cool. Ain't nothing wrong with admitting that you a gatekeeper. But at the same time, you talked all that stuff about Mario Barrios. And we see Mario Barrios get knocked out, knocked down multiple times against a smaller Javante Tank Davis. You talked all the big talk. You went in there against Mario Barrios. You was jacked all up. You was super swole. You was probably bigger or bigger and bulkier than I ever seen you, which took away from your punching power. It's a little bit slower. You didn't have the same thump on your punches. You didn't say, have the same stamina. You looked aged. 
and you didn't have a good performance against Mario Barrios. Now you've been on this long hiatus and you're going to come back and fight somebody that's been active, building momentum, gaining steam and steamrolling over people in a higher weight class that's younger. You just going to have to show me, Keith Thurman. I don't want to count you out. I hope to see a good, exciting fight. But to me, it's hard for me to believe that Keith Thurman is going into this fight with his mind right to win against Tim Zhu. I just don't believe it. If he wins, I give him all the credit in the world. But if he goes in there, he dances around and he gets knocked out or knocked down multiple times and hurt to the body. Then I'm not going to be surprised. And I'm going I'm to give Tim Zhu extra credit. Even though I don't believe that Tim Zhu, you know what I'm saying, is is he's fighting some tailor made guys. And, and, and uh, to me, Keith Thurman is tailor made. I don't care. Tim Zhu, I'm going to give him his full credit and I'm going to give him some extra credit because Keith Thurman, he, you, you, you sell in this fight. You got to go in here and perform. And if you get knocked out by Tim Zhu, you opening the gate wide open and rolling out the red carpet and throwing rose petals at his feet for him to just have a grand interest into the Tim Zhu era. So, you know, all that big, big, big talking, it can have, you know, great effects on selling the fight, but it's also going to make me give Tim Zhu all the credit he even don't deserve if he goes in there and he dismantles you and breaks you down and stops you. So, um, I seen that Jamel Charlo might be, be trying to line up something with Terrence Bud Crawford, in which, in my opinion, that is really the fight. You know what I'm saying? Terrence Bud Crawford, uh, even though Jamel Charlo didn't have a great performance against Canelo, and Terrence Bud Crawford has been campaigning to go fight Canelo, I just don't like that fight. Even though I think if Terrence Bud Crawford was able to be able to go up and defeat Canelo, it's just, that's just cementing his legacy above, that's greatest of all time legacy fight. Uh, not necessarily because, because it's Canelo. It's because if you look at Terrence Bud Crawford and his journey, if his journey ends at beating Canelo, then it's hard to top that from any era. Any era. Pick one. It's just hard to top. You know, first of all, Terrence Bud Crawford, for me, gets all the credit in the world from his, you know, devastating win over Errol Spence. Anything on top of that is, is just extra credit and cherries on top. But if it happens to be a Canelo fight, that's mega in my mind because mega uh, because Canelo is still touted as the face of boxing, which is hard to deny that because Javante Tank Davis definitely is reducing his his you know um, validation of being the face of boxing with Leonard Ellaby telling people that he can go back down to one thirty when you got Devin Haney going up and beating Regis Prograis at one forty. It just don't add up right now, you know what I'm saying? So. Canelo right now is still the face of boxing. He should fight Benavidez, but he fought Jamel Charlo. He might fight Jamal Charlo. He fought Jamel Charlo. Jamel Charlo did not have a great performance, but Jamel Charlo was going up two weight classes and he was coming off an injury and he was coming off of a break. You know what I'm saying? I want to see Jamel Charlo fight Tim Zhu. I want to see Terrence Bud Crawford fight Tim Zhu. But with that being said, the greatest fight out of all of these names I'm mentioning in my mind, still, would be Terrence Bud Crawford coming off of a great victory over Errol Spence versus Jamel Charlo coming off of not a, not a great soul performance, but he wasn't really hurt and broken down. He still came out unscathed against Canelo, which has given him tons and tons of experience. And in a higher weight class, to me, that's still Jamel Charlo, in my mind, to a certain extent, still undefeated at that weight class because that Tony Harrison victory uh, the loss to Tony Harrison was controversial. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he came back and got redemption. The draw against uh, Castano, he came back and got redemption. Jamel Charlo just does better the second time out the gate. Not everybody comes out the gate and, and is always the spectacular performance uh, when they get one shot. Like Terrence Bud Crawford had that one big shot against Errol Spence and he just performed to a higher level. 
Jamel Charlo usually comes out has a flat performance or right at the right at the edge of being a great performance and the fall short, but he comes back in the second performance and, and, and shows and proves. If he fights against Terrence Bud Crawford, I think the whole mentality would be different. The weight class is different. The experience level is now different because he fought Canelo, Errol Spence uh, against Terrence Bud Crawford, even sharpened Terrence Bud Crawford even more. Terrence Bud Crawford versus Jamel Charlo would be an excellent fight. Jam uh, uh, boots. In my opinion, Boots should have been trying to cut everybody off and go up to their higher weight class and fight at Tim Zoo. I don't know really what Boots is doing, but when I watch that Kakazan, Karen, Kareem Kakazan fight, you know, I just still looked at Boots and Bozy as, you know, they still have some things they got to work on, even though he had a fight right after that where he looked spectacular doing slow motion punches and everything. But dude was tailor-made for him to, to look great. 